200 miles an hour. Be Victoria. The family know they're lucky to be alive. Dear Gatia, pig bang on the door, food falling and um, strong wind pushing pushing the the windows, the walls, um, even the the top flying out like the roof flying out and it's it's terrifying. In the hills around Port Vila, barely a building is untouched. And imagine the force needed to uproot a tree like this. This green tarpaulin marks where the village well used to be in the tiny community of Tanono. Now the water's only good to wash in. People can't live like this for long. People really need water and shelter. And they also need food. If the help doesn't come, I will still ask him. I'm going to pray and I'm going to keep on to ask for an help. And help is arriving, but the aid operation is not yet in full swing. In the villages around the capital, remarkably and thankfully, most people got away with their lives. But the damage is massive. It's going to take months, if not years, to rebuild. And what we don't know is the situation on Vanuatu's more remote islands, many of which remain unreachable. People here are showing remarkable strength and resilience, but the full impact of Cyclone Pam may not be known for several days, and recovery will be a much longer road. John Donison, BBC News, in Vanuatu. Falling oil prices have had a dramatic impact on the North Sea oil and gas industry. More than 1,300 jobs have been lost over the past uh, six months. Leading figures have been warning that the industry's future could be at risk. But the BBC understands that this week's budget will include a major tax cut for North Sea companies. Our business editor, Kamal Ahmed, has the story. Can the government... Look at the amount of people that have been laid off and, and going to be getting laid off. You know, it's, it's running out of thousands. In the capital of the oil industry, pressure has been building for action.